Sorel RMD here. This video is all about porta cats. If you or a family member is having a porta cat placed, you're in the right place. Keep watching and I will tell you everything you need to know about porta cats. So a little disclosure, I'm an interventional radiologist in training. I've placed many of these devices. I love placing these devices and I can tell you everything you need to know about them. So first off, what is a porta cath? Before we even get into that, let's talk about the name of the device because it's known by so many names that it can be very confusing. So what are some other names for a porta cath? It's also known as a simply a port, a chest port, a metaport, an infusion port. Some people abbreviate porta cath as PAC, so I've seen that. It's called a power port, which is a specific brand name of port produced by Bard Pharmaceutical. The people that reimburse us for the placement of these ports refer to this as a tunneled subcutaneous venous access device, including a reservoir. So all these things mean the same thing, which is port -a cath which is a port and a catheter. So what is a port -a cath All right, so here's a great picture of a port -a cath So here is the port device right here. And here is the catheter. And this is the portion which connects the catheter to the port very securely right here. This is just a little bit of fat from the explantation of this port. So let's start with a catheter because that's a little bit easier to understand. All the catheter is is a hollow plastic tube, basically about the size of a coffee stirrer. And this portion of the catheter is placed within the large vein that is inside the neck. This is called the internal jugular vein. This tip of the catheter will be all the way down in the superior vena cava, and that vein connects directly to the right atrium of the heart. That's the chamber of the heart that receives all of the venous blood from uh, throughout the body. This portion, the port, is a little more complicated. I'm going to show that to you right now. So this is a cross section of the port portion of the porta cath. You can see that there's a needle being inserted into this device. The portion of the port right here is called the septum. This is usually made out of rubber. This allows a special type of needle called a Huber needle to penetrate through that. Once you go down through that, you're now in this region called the reservoir or the port. Once you have a needle down here, you're in direct continuity with the catheter, which as we discussed is in direct continuity with the vein. So this needle is now in direct continuity with the vein. If I attach IV tubing to that needle, I can therefore be in a position to either infuse medications like chemotherapy directly into the vein. I'm also in the position to remove blood and use that for lab tests. So the beauty of these devices is that they're entirely underneath the skin. This is a nice example of a port -a cath in situ, in place in a patient. Here's the port device. You can see the catheter here is underneath the skin in the subcutaneous plane. Here above the level of the clavicle right here, you can see the catheter here. It actually dives down there into the internal jugular vein in the neck and then is inside the superior vena cava in the chest draining into the heart. You can see here this is a scar that's made to place the port device into a little pocket here. This red mark here is just from the needle going through the skin going into that port septum and then the reservoir. So who places porticaths? The physicians that have the most experience placing porticaths are going to be interventional radiologists. We are physicians with six years of training after medical school, and we are the specialists when it comes to venous access devices. I would say about 30% of the work that we do is in venous access, and about a third of that is going to be in placing ports. I just want to say something about doctors in general. If you or a loved one needs a procedure, you're going to want to go to the doctor that's performing that procedure pretty much every single day. The more experience you have with a procedure, the better you're going to be at it. So for example, let's say you need heart surgery. And not only do you need heart surgery, you need an aortic surgery. You need to go to a cardiac surgeon that specializes in aortic procedures. And when it comes to venous access devices, we are the specialists of placing porticaths. If I needed a port done, or if one of my loved ones needed a porticath done, I would ask the person that does the most ports in the hospital and that is going to be an interventional radiologist. Next, let's talk about what's the worst that could happen. What are the complications of porticaths? I would say in general, this procedure is extremely, extremely safe. 
especially in the hands of an experienced interventional radiologist. One way to kind of understand this surgery is to kind of place it on the spectrum. If an IV is a 0 and heart surgery is a 10, a portacath is pretty much a 2 on that scale, maybe a 3 at max. There are, in general, two categories of complication. There's a type of complication that could occur during the placement of the device, and there's a complication that could occur in the long term, having the device in place. The likelihood of having a major complication during the portacath surgery, something that would require a hospitalization or cause a permanent disability or even cause death, the likelihood of that is almost zero, but we can never say zero in medicine, so I would quote something about 1% or less. Realistically, probably one in a thousand chance of something like that happening. So what are the things that could happen in the long term? You have the portacath placed, then what? The two main things that could happen is that the portacath gets infected, leading to a bloodstream infection, which could be difficult to treat. And the other thing could be that the vein that contains the catheter could thrombose or occlude, and you could have a venous occlusion. Both of these things are rare, somewhere in the range of 5% or less, and that depends really on the lifetime of the catheter. So if you're having the catheter in for a short period of time, your risk is less. And the longer you have the catheter in, those risks of the infection and thrombosis of a vein, both are going to go up. So the best course of action is really to have the catheter in for the minimum amount of time that you're going to need it for treatment. So there you go. That's everything you need to know about portacaths. That's what they are. We are the doctors that place them, interventional radiologists. And those are the worst things that can really happen to you with a portacath. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Srelgo RMD. Find my contact information on the page. What else can I say? Thank you for watching, and take care, America.